Korean jungle. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Straight Talk with Firas al Masadik. In this episode, I will be talking about the difference between the 2009 a global financial recession and the 2020 recession that we already entered. Of course, my talk will be mainly in the light of the real estate market and in particular the real estate market in Dubai. I'll be also sharing with you some really valuable insights. So whether you are an investor or a real estate agent or a buyer or a tenant or a seller, these insights will really allow you to make well-educated decisions and will allow you to navigate towards your best interest in today's market that is full of uncertainties. So before I start sharing with you some data and statistics, let me tell you about the main differences between the 2009 financial crisis and the 2020, in the light of the recent, of course. So 2009 was not just a, a financial crisis, it was actually real estate crisis because uh, prices were highly inflated, um, and people were overly leveraged as we arrived to the 2009 crisis. To give you an example, in Dubai, some of the apartments that were selling for 1,000 for 4,000 per square foot as off plan, and today it's selling for 1,000 per square foot. So when we arrived at the 2009 crisis, if you look at the prices in 2008, you would see that prices were really off the roof. And of course, banks were, rent were lending right, left and center all around the world, whether you look at uh, the US, Europe, or even in Dubai which basically led many people to be overly leveraged. And of course, with overly leveraged people, you would have a lot of speculators who have almost zero uh, financial holding power to hold on their properties. So they couldn't last when the recession hit the market. So they have to exit. Many people were terminated by developers because they could not meet their, their next payments. Even developers themselves were overly uh, leveraged. What about 2020 recession? Of course, in 2020 recession, we are entering or we already entered the recession with six years price low. Whoever bought in 2016, maybe more 17, 18 and 19, they, they, they knew that the market is down. They knew that they're actually buying in a down market. So none of these people or almost uh, none of these people are actually speculators. They're not people who actually invested uh, because they wanted to exit from the market in six months. They're not people who invested because they wanted to, to resell after the second or the third payment because they understood that the market's been down for three years. So th th those are investors who invested with a medium to a long-term view. And I'll prove this to you uh, on, my, on my screen now shortly, like I said, using data and statistics. To take one step further here on this topic, as we all know that 2013 was a very, very exciting year for us in Dubai. It was the year where the expo was announced. And of course, uh, the announcement of the expo has pushed prices by maybe 10 or 15% even um, higher in Dubai towards the end of 2013, but took effect on the, on the data uh, in first quarter 2014. So basically, to give you a real insight on where we stand today in the market, on where we stand today in the market, um, I'm going to... I'm going to be comparing data for ready properties in Dubai. So I'm not factoring any off plan prices because, because you know, some developers are selling at decent prices, decent products. Some developers are selling at higher prices than what these properties are, are worth because they're marketing uh, to people who don't understand the real estate market in Dubai, uh, targeting those people, inexperienced investors. Anyway, that's not our topic. I don't want to lose uh, sight on our focal point here. So I'm considering ready apartments because I believe that this is the real indication, not the off-plan prices. The ready apartments and um, the prices of ready apartments in Dubai, on the secondary market especially, gives us the best indication because this is the real price an end user is willing to spend or to pay uh, uh, for their properties, uh, whether actually rent or sales. So I took ready apartments, the difference between 2013 and 2019, uh, and you will see that I've taken three parameters. So one is the number of sales transactions recorded in Dubai Land Department in that year. Uh, number two, the value of sales transactions recorded in Dubai Land Department. And number three, the average price per square foot across all of Dubai. Of course, I've taken this across the board in Dubai. So this is a blanket approach on the resale market in Dubai. However, if you, if you purchase, if you invested in any of uh, the Dubai communities and you want to take one step 
uh, further and understand the data of that particular community, you can visit www.property-trends.com uh, and you can also download a free mobile application on your iPhone or uh, Samsung. Uh, basically, the application called Fan Properties and also has the same exact market insights. If you want any further further explanation on that, you can also connect with me. You can drop me an email at CEO at fanproperties.com. Anyway, so back to this to, to the data. You will see that in 2000 and um, in 2013, we are seeing here 36,000 transactions registered. In 2019, we're seeing around 16,000 sales transactions. As for the value of sales transactions in 2013, the market witnessed around 53 billion worth of sales. And in 2019, it's almost 50% um, of that, slightly more than 50% actually, we're around at around 32 to 33 billion dirham worth of sales. So that's about the uh, number of sales transactions and the value of sales transaction. Let's look now at, let's look now at the, at the data of the average price per square foot. So in 2013, as I mentioned, the impact of the price increase in 2013 was registered with transactions in 2014 because it always takes some time to start marketing and to start selling on the new prices. So you can see that 2013 was 951 per square foot. That's the average. In 2014, it was 1,043 per square foot. And in 2019, we are looking at 771 dirhams per square foot. So what these all these data tell me is the, um, the number of sales transactions and the value of sales transactions went down between the peak and 2019, uh, basically by almost 50%. However, prices have not gone proportionately to that uh, figure. So prices have gone down maybe by 20%, 25%, maybe 30% in some areas. So that shows definitely some price resilience. And as I mentioned before about the difference between 2009 crisis and 2020 financial crisis, the main difference is why this price resilience. It's not because I'm trying to market that there's a price resilience, but I'm actually telling you that the reason behind the price resilience is that most of the people who invested are people who are investing on the medium and on the long term, which means they have the financial power, they have planned their payment plans, they, they have planned uh, 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 their financial cash flow very well over the coming few years and hence they're not selling just at any prices in addition to that we're arriving at six years price low so i mean real estate will never go to zero as you all may agree with me it's of course worth mentioning that the property-trends.com website and the mobile application are empowered by fan properties because this is our approach to the market this is how we advise our investors, whether we're talking to a seller, a buyer, or a tenant. And I think in this market, it's really essential for people to choose whom to speak with. And I think during these times that are full of uncertainties, there's no chance for trial and error for investors. So whether you are actually a seller or a buyer, the first thing you need to do is to really need to understand and to qualify the approach of your advisor towards the market. When your advisor is telling you sell at this price or buy at this price or rent at this, at this price, on what basis? You need to ask about what are these fundamentals that got your advisor to believe that this is a true opportunity. The fundamentals always have to be grounded in reality, in numbers, in data and statistics. Otherwise, it's just an opinion. That's how many real estate investors lost so much money in the market because they just looked at the brochure they they liked the lifestyle images uh, designed and produced by the developer and of course conveyed by by agents they didn't look at the numbers they either like to deal with a particular uh, agent without looking really at the fundamentals behind uh, their investment decision i think real estate is one of the safest investments um, but when people over leverage themselves and they actually take uncalculated investment decisions, that's when they enter into a great risk because at the end of the day, it's a high value product. You're not investing a thousand or two thousand dollars in this. It's actually a product that can be worth a uh, multi-million dollars. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And um, all I can say that please, if you have any comments or questions you would like me to address, you can either email me at ceo at fanproperties.com 
or alternatively um, you can leave a comment in the comment section below and I would love to address and answer all your questions. Thank you so much uh, for watching and stay tuned for much more to come.